Okay, so you've got an image that you want to change out the background. I'm going to show you how to take your subject and either just add a texture to the background or completely change out the background altogether. It's a pretty simple process using Luminar Neo, but I'm going to walk you through the steps and we'll try one that's a little on the simple side and one that's a little more on the complicated side. So we'll try both, let you see how everything works and some of the pitfalls you can expect to run into and some tips to try to avoid them. But without any further ado, let's roll the intro. Okay, so here are the two images that we're going to work with today. Uh, this one's going to be a little more straightforward. She's just on gray. And um, we're going to take add a little texture, do a texture overlay on this background. So this will be a pretty simple one, just kind of extract her out, just kind of show the basics. This one will be a little more complicated because we've got a little busier background behind him, and we're going to try and put him in a totally different background uh, behind him and just completely change it out. So this will be a little more complicated, so we'll try two of them here. Ought to give us a good look at some of the things we can do. So with her, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this and turn off the bottom one because we're going to use that here in just a minute, but we'll come back to that. So for now, we've got this top one. We're going to go ahead and go into Luminar Neo. Okay, so here we are in the software. And first thing you want to do is you're going to need to make sure that you have this. The remove background is an extension through Neo, and you'll find that here under extras. It's where you'll really find all your extensions. It's right here, this background removal. Uh, you need to make sure you have that or this is not going to work. So uh, as long as that's installed, then you should be able to look over here under layer properties, masking, and there it is, background removal AI. So we're going to go ahead and select that, let it go to work, and it's going to take a look at the image and decide what to mask and what not to mask, and we'll see how it does just right off the bat. Okay, so you can see it's masked pretty well. Um, this will be complicated up here with the, the little strands of hair, but um, we've got it on main object. We can go ahead and say human, uh, hit remove. And here it's done it. It's done a pretty clean job through here. I think the edges look good. Let's move this up to maybe 100%. See a little better. And it's got a nice soft edge along the edge of the sweater. I think that works good. You've got some gray showing through here. Uh, it's always going to be complicated with all the little strays like that. But I think it's done pretty well. And I think when we just drop a texture in behind her, it's going to be perfect. So um, this is pretty good. What we can do, let's just really look quickly at the refinement brush. Click here to drop down. And you'll see there's three different things here. The background is in blue. And you'll notice these buttons are the same color. Background's in blue. Object is in this brown khaki color. Transition is just kind of a clear. So we put on background. And we can go through here and look, and you can see pretty much all of the background is blue. But if there was something sticking out that we want to get rid of, we could color that in blue, but we've, we're pretty much good on that. What you would want to do here under Object is look for some areas if for some reason it was cutting into the leg or something like that. You can come through, and we're going to get a little bit smaller brush using the bracket keys. So if you were worried about that little piece there, you could just color it in. And um, But it's, we look pretty good through here. You could go ahead, just make sure that it knows that that's all sweater. And you don't have to do the whole thing. Um, we don't have to color her completely in with this brown. But just areas where you think it might be a problem. We could even get a little closer to the hair here if you want to just make sure that we don't lose any of that. Not necessarily a problem because I didn't notice anything missing before. But the transition is uh, where you're going to probably want to go along, especially areas like this, where the, uh, the hair meets the edge. A little extra transition work through here usually looks nice. Okay, so I think we're good there. And uh, we can go ahead and turn off the refinement brush, and we will see her just on a blank background. Go ahead and hit Apply. Okay, so here she is. Uh, we can turn the background on back behind her and everything goes away. So we've got just the model floating on her own layer here in the gray. We will go ahead and um, bring in just a little texture like this. 
just drop it on top. It's covering her up, so here on the uh, Layers palette, we're going to move it to the middle. So now this, first off, let me close this texture. First off, this is a good chance to kind of look through and see, just right off the bat, how it's doing. And it's really nice throughout here. You've got a little bit of gray showing through here in the hair. Like I said, that's going to always be a very problematic area for any of the masking softwares, but it's done a nice job up here with the hair. I'm really happy with everything else. And what we're going to do in this case is change the blending mode to soft light so that it just gives that texture to the gray. And now we've kind of, th this problem back here has resolved itself and it looks nice. She's just on a gray background. And um, I think that's pretty successful with, with a pretty small amount of effort. Okay, so let's take a look at this one now. And what I want to do is let's go through real quick first and I'm just gonna crop this to 5x7 we're gonna try and take this and put him just in front of more of a uh, almost make it look like more of a studio background or something so we will uh, go ahead and compose him how we want to do it like this there we go then let's go ahead and jump into the software all right, so we're good. again, we're going to go under Edit, Layer Properties, Masking, Background Removal. And so we'll see what it does here. we got a much more complicated uh, background going here, a bunch of different things happening back there. And so we'll see how good of a job it does extracting him. All right, and it looks pretty good. Uh, pretty good edges all through here. It did miss this piece right here, it looks like, but this all looks pretty good. Let's go ahead, click Human here hit remove, let it do its work, and it's a pretty good cutout through there. Again, we've missed this piece, and this is getting a little muddy up here, so I'm going to zoom into 100%. Let's get here where we can see that piece, and we're going to go into the refinements brush, and again, we want to select the, well, let's do the background, probably the easiest way, and tell it that this little piece over here is background. Now we're going to need a smaller brush. Not like that. Just kind of color in this area. All right, and you can see it's cut out that opening now and just kind of surrounded it with some of the, the blue from the coat. So now we've got an opening where we can see through. So that looks good. It's actually kind of clear. I guess it's maybe looking at that as a transition, but uh, should make it transparent for us, which will be good. Take a look up here at the top of the hair. It's a little blurry through there, so I'm going to select object. Let's get a little bit bigger brush size. Like that. And I'm just painting over the stuff that I want to make sure that I'm keeping. Like this. All right, and then we can switch to transition and do one more pass through these areas where the hair kind of meets the background. Let's see if we can bring out a little more of that detail just right along the edge like that. Good, see how much more texture, uh, sharp little hairs we have through there. I think that looks nice. Let's go ahead and um, I think that's good. Let's close up the refinement brush. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's drop back here to uh, fit the screen. And we're gonna come over here to layers. And I've just got some textured backgrounds in here um, from my computer and I'm just gonna pick one of these. Turn this like that. A little bit bigger. There we go. All right, bring that opacity up. Now it's, of course, blocking him because this layer is on top, so we need to drag this layer down below him. There we go. Now we've got this background back behind him. Let's take zoom in a little bit and see what the hair looks like. It's a little soft through the edges here. What we might want to do is, while we've got this background layer selected, is go under, like, say, Details. And uh, we're going to bring this sharpening up a little bit. But what we're not, what we're going to do is actually move the other direction. So I'm going to move everything back a tiny bit and try and just kind of soften that background. 
and this kind of give you a before and after. See, it's making it just a little bit softer. I think that makes it a little more realistic. But now I think that um, looks pretty good. We get in here, we can see that uh, we've got nice separation there along the coat. So again, you probably want to go through and clean this up a little bit. But as far as a quick transformation, um, it does a pretty good job of selecting that subject and um, allowing you to drop them in like that. Now again, what you can do is go ahead and keep things on separate layers and uh, try it that way. But as far as a portrait, especially something like this, which is a little more complicated, um, I think it does a pretty good job. It certainly gets you in the ballpark right away. The difference will be when you go in under the background removal, how much time you want to spend using those brushes to add, subtract um, areas, you know, get, get your background, your object, and your transition. The more time you spend kind of fine tuning those, the better the selection will be. And this one we kind of did quickly, but it still gives you a pretty good idea of uh, what you can do. There you go, pretty good results, I would say. Uh, it's certainly very fast for getting a basic background swap done. Uh, now, certainly the more time you spend going in and really cleaning up that selection, the better it's going to be. Sometimes you'll need to do that, sometimes you won't. Either way, I think it's a pretty good starting point to get you on your path toward changing out those backgrounds. Leave me a comment below. Let me know if you've got any ideas of ways that this can be done better, that you've found uh, shortcuts or things like that within Neo. I'd love to hear about it. But that's all we have for this week. I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.